Rita Jawele, that she was published last spring, yes. correct? Or mm -hmm. Feminist Manifesto, um, was an essay that you had written for a friend, uh, yep. advice on how to raise her feminist daughter. Yep. Uh, and you also have a young daughter. I do. <laughs> so are you raising your daughter to be a feminist, and are you taking your own advice? I am. <laughs> I really, I am, I am. And how are you doing that? <laughs> well, how old is she? She's going to be two next month. <laughs> <laughs> and what is her name? I don't like to. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Um, but she's, she's just delightful. And she's a fierce little thing. And my husband says, I wonder where she got that from. <laughs> and I go like, I wonder too. But, but the thing for me that is, has been enlightening is that it's very easy to, to dispense advice when you don't have to follow it yourself. Yes. And so when I was writing the book, I thought, oh, this is very easy to do. This is what you should do. And my, my, you know, my daughter is still a baby, but I'm starting to see it's kind of like the forces in the universe that are, are aligned against your, your best intentions, you know? <laughs> and, and, and so I realized it's hard. It's very hard to, to push back against convention, right? to, to constantly say, because, and, and, and small things start to matter. So, you know, sometimes it's an extended family member who will say something. You know, and you ignore it the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, you just get really annoyed. And it can be anything from her hair, which she's not yet to, and I just refuse to, to comb her hair because she cries. So, you know, so we're sort of, she's like Blue Ivy when Blue Ivy was little. <laughs> yeah. The older people here are like, what? <laughs> But she, um, so, you know, and I, and I remember a, a family member um, from my husband's side of the family <laughs> saying, oh, what, you want her hair to, to dread? Do you want it to be dread? And I was like, you know, that's not, the point is, she's a baby, I don't want to comb her hair and have her cry for a reason that is stupid. Okay? <laughs> when she's old enough to, to sort of have a conversation about what she wants to do with her hair, then we might comb it, right? I mean, she's, she's lucky her hair isn't very, um, it's sort of easy to handle, so I'll just wash it and I'll sort of do things to it, but I won't comb it. And, and you usually have family members saying things, and it's because convention states that her hair has to be tight and what we call neat. And I just think, why? And I'm also planning that as she gets older, we're just not going to waste a lot of time on hair. I mean, and, and I say this as a person who, who seriously, I say, this, I say this as a person who loves you know, hair and, and, and look at my shoes, I'm very, Great very, shoes. very, very <laughs> but, it's also, but it's also to say that for her, what I want for her is to grow up thinking of herself not only as something that is, not, not only in aesthetic terms, I want her to think of her body as something that does things. Mm -hmm. right, so now she's playing football, um, which is, you know, what you Americans call soccer. Right. For the rest of the world, the rest of the same world called football. <laughs> um, so she's playing that, and I want her to climb trees, and I want her to, you know, I want her to know how to make things. I, and 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 hope, what I hope is that she'll grow up to think of her body as, as a machine, right? And and I'm hoping, but again, one never knows. But I'm hoping that then she might be inoculated against that terrible, horrible, ugly body issue that women are just forced on in, in really all cultures in the world, where I think very early women are taught to start to dislike themselves. And, and it's, you know, you find that in some ways to be a woman is to constantly struggle with self-dislike. And I, I find that so just, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, but I realize as well that it's difficult. So I, I find myself being very alert to nuances now, I'm looking at children's books, I'm looking at things, I'm thinking, oh my God, there's so many, there's just so much that, <laughs> that doesn't align with, <laughs> with what I believe, right? Mm -hmm. So you just find that it's a struggle. And now I kind of want to write to my friend and say, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize how bloody hard this thing is, you know? <laughs> That's the second book after the book. Yes. <laughs> is your friend she, following your advice? She is. She her is. Daughter, How's it going is, for her? She says it's going well. Her daughter has a lovely child who's um, going to be four. Um, 
and she, you know, she, she's doing well. I mean, my friend sometimes says that she still has a bit of trouble with the doing it together because her husband is very well-meaning but also really deeply thinks that it's a woman's job to raise the child. How's that going for them? <laughs> she is uh, surviving. So what advice do you give her for that? No, I say to her, don't let up. Mm -hmm. Right, I think, I mean, it's very easy to sort of get frustrated and say, but I, I, I just keep saying to her, don't, don't let up. Make him, right? It, say two times, two times a week, you give her back. And if he's late, let, let the child go to bed late. That's fine. Nothing will happen to the child, right? You know, do your part. I mean, because I think women, and understandably so, I mean, I think that idea when women say, oh, he won't do it well, right? Um, Nobody's born with a cooking or a domestic gene. It's something everybody learns. And, and any man can learn how to do these things, right? So I just say to her, keep, no, seriously. And, and once I said to her, this is what you do. Um, she has domestic health, and she said she wanted her husband to um, give the, this was when the child was maybe two, give her a bath. And he wasn't home, and it was getting late. And I said to her, this is what you do, get in your car go get a drink somewhere. <laughs> and then call him and say, I'm at a bar, I'm having a drink, and your child is home waiting for her back. <laughs> because, you know, there's a sense in which um, one has to do that, because it's very easy to give up and give in. And I understand that. And I know many women end up just saying, 